Hi, Manchester, and welcome back to The Carla Garrick Show. It's episode 30, and I'm delighted that you are joining me here today. Uh, I have a lot to cover, and as it usually happens, I am as well prepared as you would expect. So not very. Um, I did want to catch everyone up a little bit on, you know, just generally what's been happening in the landscape of the libertarian world of the free state of New Hampshire. So over the past few months, I'm sure you're seeing a lot of reports about these crazy radicals, these extremists, these people who are just mucking up everything in New Hampshire politics. Well, I have news for you. It's not half as dramatic as everyone wants to make you think. So what's been in the news? First of all, there was Gunstock. So Gunstock, as most of you know, is a state-owned ski resort. Let's just stop there for a hot second. State-owned ski resort. Hmm. Should the government be in the business of running a ski resort? Ah, I don't think we should, but you know, that's certainly at least a question that should be explored. With the question of gun stock, I did hear people uh, from the left mostly criticizing state reps who said having gun stock owned by the government is Marxist. Now, is it? Is it communism when a ski resort is owned by the government? Definitionally, yes, yes it is. So at Gunstock, what happened was we have the Belknap Commission and they are overseeing this state-run ski resort. So there's a management team that works for Belknap and works for the ski resort for Gunstock. And in the middle of an audit, they quit. Now... I've been a corporate attorney for a long time, and I will tell you, that's a super red flag. You know, if if an entire management team suddenly says, we're just not going to work because there's this audit happening and we're upset and people are trying to do too much oversight. Okay, so the way it's been reported in the media thus far is suddenly, oh, these evil free staters are like, I don't know, trying to privatize a state-run ski resort. I don't think that would be the worst thing, but it is really up to the citizens and the granite staters of Belknap County to make these decisions. What do we know? We do know that there have been illegal or at least unethical contributions that were made from the management team of Gunstock to Governor Sununu, there's a $500 check and a $1,000 check that have come out. The audit is not complete, but rumor on the street is there's going to be some suspicious bonuses that are being paid. I do know that there was a union leader article uh, probably a, almost a month ago now that had this one throwaway sentence, which we all know when you want to find out if something's corrupt, follow the money. The throwaway sentence was, well, yeah, the management team gets paid a lot compared to everyone else in Belknap County, but it's not exorbitant for the ski industry. So I think there's still a lot that's going to come out with that. I don't think uh, it's fair to blame the free staters. As far as I know, based on what I looked at the commission, there are 12 people on the commission and only two of them are known free staters. One gentleman came out and actually said, hey, I'm not a free stater. That was the third guy. And the other people I don't know from Adam. So I think there's this push to try and make free staters scapegoats for anything that's going wrong or for anything that makes the establishment look bad. So that's gun stock. Then, of course, we had this whole situation in Croydon. And if there it was free staters who followed the democratic process that is established in that town in order to try and make reforms. So what happened? There was a town meeting. At the town meeting, there was a proposal to cut the school budget by 50%. That cut, by the way, would put the town of Croydon's education spending on par with private schools in the area, including Montessori. So 
for the same amount of money that they could spend sending a kid to a private school uh, doesn't seem that crazy or that radical to me. But the townsfolk got pretty mad about it. Rightly, they went and they did their process. They convened another meeting and they had uh, the town come out. Now, I've seen reports where they say, oh, so now there's like 370 to two was the final vote. That is true. Um, the 300, I don't know if it's 70, but it's in that ballpark, uh, to two. And therefore, there's this claim of this massive win for uh, the townsfolk of Croydon. Now, that's not the correct way to look at it. What actually happened was the, uh, the people who did not want the budget to go back to the double amount. So the people who wanted the savings, the people who wanted lower property taxes, just didn't turn out. So I think if you were to look at that and try and really weight which side, you know, what it looks like, I think it's probably 60-40, it's not 98-2, right? So, uh, so that was fascinating because again, people were just heavily criticized, but Every step of the way, the normal process was followed. And so it almost feels like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't because, uh, you know, when we do civil disobedience, people are upset about that. But then when we follow the process that is in place or run for office or get elected or try and make changes and reforms, we get criticized for that as well. Um, the latest critics have their little knickers in a knot about uh, secession. All right, so uh, what is secession? First of all, America was born from secession. We became independent because people were like, you know what, we don't like this stupid king anymore. We don't like how much he's taxing us. We are literally going to take our toys and go our own way. So, um, so when people say that this notion of trying to pursue independence is un-American, I have news for you. Secession, talk of independence, talk of reform, saying our government sucks and that we need to do something about it is about as American as you can get. So there's this lady. Uh, her name is Karen. I'm not making that up. I mean, she is a literal Karen who is super upset about the state reps who voted for CACR 32. Let's stop for a second. What was CACR 32? So that is a constitutional amendment that was proposed in the legislature. In order for a constitutional amendment in the state of New Hampshire to pass, it has to pass by 60% of the vote in the legislature. That means both in the House with 400 reps and in the Senate with 24 reps. From there, it then goes onto the ballot when we have an election and everyone who votes in the state of New Hampshire, so you and me, your friends, your family, your neighbors, everyone gets a chance to weigh in and to say, yes, this sounds like an awesome idea, or no, that is bananas, I will not support that. In order for that constitutional amendment to pass, once it's on the ballot, it has to receive 67% of the general vote. So why are those numbers important? They're important because they actually show that it's a very, very high bar. It is also the most democratic way one could make this change. Now, New Hampshire has a unique constitution, and it has something in its constitution that is unique to our state. I believe there's only one other state that also has an enshrined right of revolution. Article 10 of the New Hampshire Constitution says, I'm paraphrasing obviously, but what it says is, hey, if your government sucks so hard and you've complained and complained and complained and they continue to ignore you, the official term for that is redress of grievances, then you have the right to revolt. The people and the legislature who introduced this bill were suggesting that there is a peaceful path to 
change. So I don't know about you, but I think the federal government sucks. Why does it suck? Well, let's start with the unconstitutional wars. You know, the media doesn't really cover this anymore, but we are bombing people all over the world. Uh, go look at what's happening in Yemen. Go look what's happening in Africa. Go look at what's happening in the Middle East. And I'm not even talking about when we withdrew from Afghanistan and left billions and billions of dollars of weapons in the hands of the people we were fighting. Unconstitutional wars. Let's talk about inflation. Let's talk about the fact that your gas prices were over $4 this summer and that, you know, the Biden administration is now saying, oh, well, you know, it's down again. I'm like, yeah, it's still double what it was two years ago. Also, energy costs. The energy costs in this country are skyrocketing. And, the, and that's the result of this uh, green energy push. If you haven't, I would highly, highly, highly recommend go find the video of Michael. It's a Michael Moore produced video that is actually an expose on the green movement. And basically what he does in this movie is he goes, hey, we need to be looking at uh, how, how, like how are wind blades made? I don't know, how are lithium batteries made? You know, there's this whole push where we are literally only looking at one side of the equation. People are just pretending like magically all this green economy stuff, solar panels, do they just fall like manna from the sky? No, they're made in factories, they're mined somewhere. So what Michael Moore did, and this documentary was banned off YouTube and several other channels, which, you know, should make you wonder. Um, but, you know, I describe it as if you, uh, wheels on suitcases. So wheels on suitcases, <laughs> seem so obvious now, right? But for forever, we didn't have wheels on suitcases. Wheels on suitcases actually come from inline rollerblade skating. That's where the original wheels came from. But I, you know, remember being a kid or a young traveler and having to like drag or carry my suitcase. And then when wheels on suitcases came around, I was like, what? So that what moment is when you go look at the flip side of the green agenda. And this green agenda is making energy expensive. And for folks back home, I know you just got your energy bill because I got mine for August and it was double. And yes, it's still went, uh, summer, so you know the aircon is on. But I'm telling you, the word on the street is it's going to double again this winter. And frankly, we as Granite Staters cannot afford it. So inflation, another reason the federal government's bad. It's corrupt. I don't know who's looked at the, uh, the debt recently or the unfunded liabilities. The U.S. debt is now so astronomical, there really is no fathomable way to repay the debt. We have settled our children and future generations to hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's not sustainable. You and I both know that when we uh, have credit card debt, you are in bad shape. Like if you start paying your mortgage with your credit card and then you take out a house loan to pay off the credit card, to pay off the other credit card, to try and pay off the interest. Now you're remiss on your car loan, but we're not even going to look at that. That is basically the federal government in a nutshell. It's not fixable. So if we think it's not fixable, what are our options? So I personally believe I'm solution driven. I'm not like, I don't want to change things for the sake of changing them. I'm genuinely trying to fix things. So I personally am pro independence. I don't know if people are going to agree with me. And honestly, if you don't, that's fine. That is what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out what people want, but also put the ideas in front of them that we have options, that we have different things that might be a better solution. Uh, the easiest way to explain it is, hey, Granite Staters, do you want to be 40% richer? 
I do, so I don't know. That would just be like getting rid of our federal income tax. Of course, if the Biden administration or any previous administration, because this is not a left-right issue, this is a us-them issue, us being the plebs and them being the elites issue. They're getting rich and we're all getting poorer. So this Karen filed a complaint with the Ballot Commission of New Hampshire. And basically her position is, these radical 13 guys who and gals who submitted a bill, the CACR 32, to put it on the ballot to peacefully secede from the US government, or from the federal government, and uh, just go our own merry way. And of course, everyone's like, what would that look like? And that's a conversation we will need to have. But this lady was just like, the fact that you even dared to put in a bill is wrong. They should all be fired. They're not um, qualified to be reps. They must just all go away. I don't know if that's how she talks, but that's certainly how it felt reading her complaint. So she filed this complaint. So uh, today we, we always film on Wednesdays. Uh, so this will be a hearing that will happen this Wednesday. Uh, when I'm done shooting this, I will be heading out and maybe I'll add a little update at the end of the show. But basically what's, what's happening is there's going to be this hearing to say these 13 candidates who are currently on the ballot. So uh, they're running for office again. So that would be the most democratic way is not to say, hey, these people aren't qualified to be elected. That seems extremely undemocratic. Surely the process is simply, hey, these guys are running for office. If you don't like what they're up to, vote the bums out, right? That's what we hear all the time. So it is interesting to me that Karen is pulling a Karen and, uh, and is filing this complaint. I will assume it is uh, because, well, Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. She did state in her complaint that she's a fourth generation military person. And so to her, it just seems outrageous. Now, I actually have a lot of sympathy for that position. I can understand that people will look at it and go, oh, wait, I murdered all these people overseas for our freedom. So this doesn't seem right. But I think we should think farther than that. And we should really look at the history of independence movements and of movements of self-determination. Anyone who follows foreign affairs will know that America loves them some self-determination overseas, right? Like they, they do like to help along some, uh, some uh, colored democracies overseas, you know, whether those are CIA backed uh, coup d'etats or not. So we do know that there's an appetite for changing regimes when it suits our regime. So clearly it's not going to suit our regime that, you know, a state would want to go its own way. But again, why can't we explore the question? So today's hearing is uh, at 1 p.m. It's up at the state archives and I will be coming back and I will do a little update tonight and then uh, let you guys know what happened. My prediction is that nothing's going to happen, mostly, to be honest, because I bet you they've actually printed the ballots and, you know, we're a cheap government here in New Hampshire. It's one of our best selling points. And so I think they're just going to say, nah, we're going to leave it. These people can stay on there. If you want to vote the bums out, you can vote the bums out. But uh, I, uh, my prediction is this is a big nothing burger and it's just uh, going to go away. I hope that's the case. I think it would be a wrong decision for the ballot commission to get involved at this stage. Um, and also, I think legally speaking, if we're going to start doing this and going down this avenue, we, we set ourselves up for a lot of uh, misuse of this going forward. I certainly have opinions myself about a lot of unconstitutional bills, including every single gun rights bill or gun control bill that uh, goes before any legislative body. So, uh, so I'm hoping 
saner minds prevail and that, you know, we just continue with business as usual. So uh, I think that's where I'm going to leave it for right now. If uh, anyone has any feedback, you can always let me know at Carla at CarlaGarrick.com. I will also be updating you guys on the Stebbins affair. As everyone knows at this stage, uh, the city of Manchester did this backroom deal to try and sell our community park to build this massive building that no one in the community wants. Uh, we did have a big meeting about it last week. Uh, there were about 50 or 60 people who were not in support of this action at all. And then there were about 10 people there, including the mayor, uh, you know, who want to see this proceed. As a reminder, this is a community park currently being used as a community garden. There are raised beds. We do vegetables there. It is on five dead end streets. The speed limit is 10 miles an hour. It is not the place to build this massive thing. I also question for anyone who lives in the city, who lives on a park, uh, your park might be next. I mean, if we let this happen, what stops the mayor from selling your park to her buddies later down the line? Um, just to wrap up, I will say this, and this was, you know, above the fold in the union leader last Thursday, the Stebbins family did apologize to us. Uh, it was apologizes to West Side neighbors. That did feel good uh, for those of us who have been married a long time, of course, know that how you apologize matters. So their apology was, they were sorry we feel upset. That's not how I was taught to apologize. I would prefer someone to say, I'm sorry I did this, uh, I don't know, backroom under market deal that no one told us about, you know, maybe take some responsibility for your actions. But be that as it may, I do think this is a positive step. It's a step in the right direction. We are going to continue to have the dialogue with the family. And hopefully we can actually figure out a location and venue and site that will work for their goals that does not actually destroy a community vegetable garden in order to put in a parking lot. That's all I have today, folks. Thank you so much for joining me for the Carla Garrick Show, episode 30. You can always find all of my content just under my name everywhere, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram. My Instagram's on fire. I only post really, really snarky memes there, so go take a look at that. Of course, I am running for office right here in Ward 11 of Manchester, and uh, I will be knocking on your door soon. So I look forward to meeting you, talking about what you're interested in, what your concerns are, and seeing if we can figure out a better future for all of us so that together we can live free and thrive.